You know, one of the consoles I don't talk about a lot on this channel is the Xbox 360. And that's a shame, because it's a really, really interesting console with some fascinating games on it. And one of my favorite things on it is Xbox Live Arcade. What's going on everybody? I'm Jay, welcome to Square Pegs. And today I want to talk to you about the Xbox 360 and specifically Xbox Live Arcade. And 10 games I keep going back to. One of the things Xbox Live Arcade was best for was giving us classic games on a brand new console. And we're starting off with one of the all-time best Metroidvanias with Castlevania Symphony of the Night. While I'm not going to go so far as to claim that the Castlevania Symphony of the Night version released on the Xbox Live Arcade is the definitive edition because there are some changes made from the original PS1 release, I will say that it is still fantastic. It is still the same signature gameplay experience you have had on the original PS1 release. The game is still magnificent, it still controls beautifully well, it is still one of the best Metroidvania RPGs ever made. It's just got some additions and some subtractions for Xbox Live Arcade. Some neat trivia behind this one too, it was also the first game on Xbox Live Arcade that was permitted to exceed the 50 megabyte file size restriction, which is kind of cool because they wanted to keep its integrity. Now that said, there are some changes. You don't have the, the full motion videos. They did add some leaderboards because that was a thing that Xbox Live Arcade made games do. You do get the achievements. There's 12 achievements worth 200 points because that was the limitation on Live Arcade games at the time. And the closing song is not the original release from the PS1 because of some licensing problems. But I still think it's fantastic. It is still one of the best games ever made. And to get it on Live Arcade and to be able to have it on a 360 is magical legitimately one of the hardest games I have ever played. Alien Hominid on the Xbox 360 developed by the Behemoth is amazing. It's just not gonna show you any kind of mercy because the game is ridiculously difficult. Set up a little bit like Metal Slug, it's a run and gun shooter where you're playing as the adorable yet incredibly deadly alien and your job is to eliminate the FBI and any other bad guys that come at you, including giant robots that'll take up half the screen. It's a fantastic experience, one of my favorite games on the Xbox 360. It's also, like, everywhere, so if you want to play it somewhere else, you don't have to play it on the Xbox 360 on Xbox Live Arcade, but this was actually the first time I played it, and I thought it was magnificent then, and it's magnificent now, it holds up. It is, like I said, exceedingly difficult. It's one-hit deaths, which makes it really hard, especially when there's all kinds of crazy stuff popping off on the screen, but it's still incredibly fun and incredibly well-designed. It does have multiplayer, so if you want to play some co-op, go ahead. It's a fantastic title, something I have a ton of fun with. Here's one that completely caught me off guard. Now, I remember playing this on PartnerNet when it initially debuted back when I worked at EA, and I was blown away by the concept of this game because I love rhythm games, and I loved the look of this game. And of course I did. It's developed by Bizarre Creations, the team behind Geometry Wars, which they'll come in later. But Boom Boom Rocket is a rhythm game that is set to kind of EDM versions of classical music, and it's amazing. You play using the face buttons, the A, B, X, or Y, and as the firework crosses the horizon line at the top, that's when you press the button, and sometimes you do have to press them in combination, which will make more fireworks explode. You're also able to trigger kind of a, an overdrive mode like you would have in Guitar Hero, which has different effects appear on screen. It's just a magnificent title. I truly, truly enjoy this one, and it's something that I wish more people had played. Like, I think this just completely flew under people's radar, but it's amazing. And if you can, you should play it, because it's a wonderful game. Look, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I've spoken about it ad nauseum on the channel in the past, so... If you are interested in my deep thoughts on this game, you can look up any of the numerous videos out there about it. But I love it on the Xbox 360. I love that it was offered on Xbox Live Arcade, albeit briefly. I love that it controls well. I love that the controller is almost made for it, and I just love the way it plays. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is one of the best fighting games of all time, and I will buy it every time it is made available physically or digitally, because it is perfection. If you enjoyed the original Bionic Commando on the NES, the Bionic Commando Rearmed is a game that you are going to love, because Hey, it's essentially the same game. It's a faithful remake with some significant improvements in both design and gameplay. 
I really, really enjoy this one. In fact, I actually kind of prefer this to the original, I'm not going to lie to you. I like the additions of having the grenade. I like the additional buttons, so it's not just all crammed onto two. And I think the look of the game is fantastic. Music in the game holds up as well, which is really nice. So some of the enhancement I really like about this one is that you actually have a health bar, as opposed to the original health system in the game. You can collect different items from characters to restore your health, as opposed to gaining more hit points, which is kind of how it worked in the first one, I think. I'm not 100% sure on that, because I kind of suck at the first one. Boss battles are massive. You can grab oil barrels and stuff like that, throw them at the enemies now, which is really cool. And I, like I said, I like the addition of having the grenade button, as opposed to you know, not. It's a really, really, really fun title. I, I think it's kind of an expert design to include multiplayer. The gameplay is identical, which is nice, but the AI will adapt to there being multiple players on screen as opposed to just being one. And you are going to share lives, so be aware of that. But the gameplay itself is super fun, and I, I really, really enjoy this one. This is a really nice remake from Capcom, and it kind of set the stage for what we started seeing from them with things like Resident Evil 4 Remake, like some of the remasters that we got for the Mega Man Legacy Collection and things like that. So it kind of all started here with Bionic Commando Rearmed. Poker Smash was one of those games that I was just enamored with the first time I saw it. I loved the concept of it. It was a really interesting take on how the Puzzle League games work. New and challenge. I loved it because at the time, this is when Texas Hold'em Poker was getting really, really big. So people were just enamored with that game and to get an action puzzle game in that vein on Xbox Live Arcade was amazing. So the way the game played is you had a series of cards that constantly scrolled from the bottom of the screen and you had to move them around and create hands either north to south or east to west based on real poker hands. So like a royal flush or a straight or a full house. And as you played you also got challenges to complete in a certain amount of time which would give you extra points. It's an incredible basic concept, but it works incredibly well. There's also a multiplayer mode, which is super fun, but for me, this was a perfect experience in a single-player campaign because it was just super fun to jump into and jump out of. You could play for five minutes, you could play for three hours, and you'd be just as satisfied. Now, I know for a lot of people this might not be on their list, but for me, Wolf of the Battlefield Commando 3 was one of the first games I remember getting on Xbox Live Arcade. And I loved it from Jump, and I still have fun with it today. This is a continuation of the Commando series. So the original Commando released in arcades and on the NES, and then we had Mercs, and now we have Commando 3, Wolf of the Battlefield. And I really enjoy it. It's a very straightforward game. It's a simple twin-stick shooter. I will say that when you hop into a vehicle, the controls are atrocious. So if you can avoid hopping in a vehicle, avoid hopping in a vehicle. But it's a really fun game, both single-player and multiplayer. I really, really like it. It's a faithful continuation of that series of games, and it feels like a natural progression of how that series would have gone if Capcom kept up with it. I really love this one. I think it's super fun. Like I said, it's a very basic game. It doesn't do anything terribly ambitious, but for me, it's fun. Another entry from Bizarre Creations, and I can tell you what, man, they were making some fantastic games back in the day, but... Geometry Wars was originally an arcade game in Project Gotham Racing 2. And this one here, Geometry Wars Retro Evolved, is just a wonderful, wonderful experience. This is a twin-stick shooter, and it's one of the best. I'm, I'm willing to go out on that limb and say that, and, and I'd, I'll be damned if anyone's going to challenge that, because the game is just nearly perfect. First off, you have incredible visuals, with wonderful voxels and pixels just everywhere, a great soundtrack, and super simple but fun gameplay that is just exactly what you want in a twin-stick shooter. You move, you shoot, you blow up the bad guys. You use your bombs when you get swarmed. It's great. This is one that I go back to constantly. And yes, I am still terrible at it, I know, and I don't care because it's fantastic. Originally released in 2005, this is just one of those games that has stuck with me now for almost 20 years, and it's magnificent. Guardian Heroes is one of those games that I never got to play on the original release on the Sega Saturn because uh, I didn't own one at the time, so I didn't really know about it. But I did know about Advanced Guardian Heroes, which released on the GBA. So when I saw the original pop up on Xbox Live Arcade, I immediately pulled the trigger on it because I had to have it because I love Advanced Guardian Heroes. And this game does not disappoint. It is a wonderful title with fantastic characters, 
a great beat em up slash RPG, which is not something that you see every day, but leave it to Treasure to come up with something absolutely fantastic. One of the things I do like about this version is you can play the original, but you can also play the remix, which does stick it into a widescreen format, as well as do some upscaling options on the sprites, so it looks a little bit different than what you originally had played, but it still performs incredibly well. You're here for the gameplay, and that's really what sells this title, because it's absolutely magnificent. The combat is challenging, but it's fun. The different characters all have unique abilities and unique gameplay styles, so you kind of get a different way to play it every single time, and there's branching paths throughout the game as you play. It's a really wonderful title, something I go back to all the time. The original Jetpack debuted back in 1983 on the ZX Spectrum, and 2007's Jetpack Refueled is a really fun continuation of that series. It's, I think, the fourth or fifth entry in the series. I, mean, I will admit, not super familiar with the entire kind of expansive Jetpack cinematic universe here, but the one that dropped on Xbox Live Arcade was fantastic because it's a true arcade experience. There's 128 levels. The gameplay is super straightforward and easy. You fly around the stage, you collect your rocket ship parts to rebuild the ship, and then you collect the fuel cells to launch it into space. All the while, you're firing at enemies, avoiding them so you don't die, and collecting power-ups to increase your weapon capacity. It's a perfect arcade experience. It is super fun, it is so well designed, and it feels like signature rare, and that's all you can ask for. There you have it, my friends, 10 fantastic Xbox Live Arcade games that I keep going back to. Let me know down in the comments below if there are any Xbox Live Arcade games you keep playing today. There's a bunch that have been delisted. Really, that's super unfortunate because there were some magnificent games on that platform and with that service that we just don't get anymore. They're not available on the Xbox Series X, they're not available on the Xbox One, and that sucks. Let me know down in the comments below if there are any favorites of yours that have been delisted. Till next time, folks, I've been Jay. I appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me. Till next time, remember to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.